guys, it's me, Hannah Payne here, and I'm back for another read along video, and we're about to read Rainbow Magic, The Sugar and Spice Fairies, Clara, The Chocolate Fairy. So we just finished the first chapter, now on to the second chapter. Chapter 2 Storeroom Surprise Surprised, Kirsty peered at the convent. Surprised, Kirsty peered at the conveyor belt and saw the tiny fairy wearing a pretty purple dress and cropped with cereal leggings. Clara was waving. Clara was waving frantically at them. Clara's getting closer to where Susie's packing. Clara's getting closer to where Susie's packing the gift boxes. Kirsty said with a worried frown. If she flies away, if she flies away now, Susie will see her. And if she stays on the conveyor belt, Clara will end up in a box of chocolates, Rachel added. Oh, Kirsty, we have to help her. I'll try to distract Susie, Kirsty decided. The rest of the group was gathered around watching Susie pack the chocolates. Kirsty hurried to join them. Could you tell us what all the different flavors are, Susie? Kirsty asked. Yes, of course, Susie replied. She turned away from the conveyor belt to glance at Kirsty. We have raspberry ripple, strawberry vanilla cream, caramel peanut. Clara flutter, Clara flutter up from the conveyor belt while Susie wasn't looking. Her long blonde hair streaming behind her. She slipped inside Rachel's bag. Thank you, girls, Claire gushed when Kirsty rejoined them. I thought I was going to be packed inside a gift box. I'm here because Jack Frost and his goblins are somewhere in Candyland. And they have my cocoa bean charm. Come on, you two, Matt called. Rachel and Kirsty. Matt called to Rachel and Kirsty, sorry, as the rest of the tour group moved on. We're going to look at a giant vat of liquid chocolate. We'll try our best to get you charm back, Clara, Kirsty promised. Chocolate, chocolate really tastes horrible without it. Matt and the rest of the group were already gathered a, around a huge vat of chocolate, a huge vat of swirling milk chocolate. Clara ducked out of sight as Kristen and Rachel went to join them. When the chocolate is liquid like this, it can be poured into different shaped molds to set. Matt was, ex Matt was explaining and then... Before Matt could finish, the chocolate suddenly began to flow over the sides of the vat. It splashed all over the floor, just missing Matt's shoes. Oh no! Matt exclaimed, waving for the tour group to move back. I don't want, I don't know why everything's going wrong today. He jumped aside as more chocolate spilled onto the floor. Could someone help fix this, please? Matt called across the room. To s Matt called across the room to some other employees. Then he turned back to the tour group. Let's go, and I will show you our chocolate molds. Matt escorted the group across across the factory to look at the molds. 
they were there were lots of different shapes, hearts, stars, diamonds, and eggs. But Rachel and Kirsty could see that the molds were all cracked and bent out of shape. I'm so sorry, everyone," and Mother, looking very embarrassed. "Poor Matt," Claire whispered to the girls as the guide quickly led them away. "This isn't his fault." It's all because Jack Frost has my cocoa bean charm. Kirsty glanced around curiously, and Matt looked. And as Matt took them to another corner of the factory, there she saw a huge silver machine squirting chocolate on rows and rows of sticky, of sticky toffee bars. The machine is making sticky toffee galores. Christy exclaimed, thrilled. That's right, Matt said, and everything seems to be running smoothly here. Thank goodness. Next to the machine, Rachel noticed a factory worker. He was wearing the same white apron hat as the others, and he was eating a sticky toffee galore very enthusiastically. It looks like this batch of chocolates tasted okay, Rachel said quietly. Rachel said quietly to Kirsty. He not like not like the one you had. Matt was frowning at the worker. You know you shouldn't. You know you shouldn't be eating on the factory floor. He scolded. It's against the rules. I'm a new taste tester. The worker mumbled through a mouthful of chocolate and toffee, turning away as Matt began telling the group about the machine. Rachel watched the worker hurry over to a cart piled with chocolate. He rushed off with the trolley, but he was going too fast. Suddenly, he tripped on the hem. Of his long apron, and and went over, and head went over heels. Rachel gasped as she saw a pair of green, as she saw a pair of green legs, as she went over his heels. Rachel gasped. She as she saw a pair of big green feet sticking. Out from beneath the apron, that work is a goblin. Rachel whispered, excitedly to Kirsty and Clara. Then we have no time to waste, declared Clara. I must have my cocoa bean charm. Quickly, girls, let me turn you into fairies before we lose him. Oh. Their hearts pounding, Kirsty and Rachel slipped out of sight behind the big silver machine. A cloud of dazzling sparkles from Clara's wand shrank the girls down to fairy size. Fluttering their wings, the three friends zoomed up into the air. There he goes, Kirsty said, pointing at the goblin racing across the factory with the cart. Stay up high, so. So that no one spots us, girls. Clara warned them. Rachel, Kirsty, and Clara darted across the factory, keeping the goblin in sight. They saw him hurry down a hallway, pushing a cart ahead of him, and stop by a large metal door marked storeroom. Clara and the girls watched as they, as the goblin went. Clara and the girls watched as the goblin yanked the door open. He's going inside, Rachel whispered. We have to follow him, said Clara urgently. The goblin shoved his cart through the door. The goblin shoved his cart through the open door, and let it close behind him. Rachel, Kirsty, and Clara. 
managed to fly through just before the door banged shut. They pierced, they perched on the door frame and looked around the storeroom. What an extraordinary sight! The storeroom was filled with all kinds of chocolates. And there were piles of photo wrapped chocolates on the floor. And there were empty boxes tossed in the corner there were chocolates in different shapes. Hearts, stars, and lots of others too. And stacks of chocolate bars too. In the middle of the room, sitting on a heap of sticky toffee galore and giggling with glee, was Jack Frost himself. What was Jack Frost doing in the storeroom? We'll find out soon in the third chapter of Query the Chocolate Factory. See you all tomorrow, and I'll see you next time.